Hello, how are you? I'm so pleased that we're going to be delving into a subject that's very dear to my heart, which is open innovation. And it's something I've been really um, sort of involved with and hands on with. And it's really, really important. So I'm going to be talking about what open innovation is and how it can transform your business, whatever sorts of, sort of organisation you are, um, however big, small, um, however long you've been around, whatever sector you're in, um, open innovation is definitely something that you need to be exploring. So as we go through, I'd love to hear from you in terms of your questions and thoughts and comments and maybe share your experiences too. Are you involved in doing open innovation? We'll talk about all of that as we get in, on with the show. And I'll also be giving you some tips in terms of how to get started with it as well, along with some examples of open innovation in action, some really current, uh, really great examples as well. OK, so lots to get on with. I'll be back in just one second after this. This is the Idea Time Show, Idea Time Show with Dr. Joe North helping facilitators expand their creativity, confidence and impact through the power of innovation in action. Gain confidence as a facilitator, confidence with the technology and confidence with your content and event design. Tune in every week for practical tips, strategies and interviews that will accelerate your personal and business success. And now, here's your host, Dr. Joe North. So open innovation is fantastic. It just really opens up opportunity uh, for all. So that's big organisations, small ones, old ones, new ones, wherever you are in the world, whatever sector you're in, whether you are private, public, not-for-profit, um, there is open innovation opportunity for you. And as I'll go on to show you, open, uh, open innovation um, is really relevant, it's really growing and it, it matters more and more because of the challenges that businesses and organisations are facing uh, right now and into the future. So um, lots to get on with and it'll be great to hear from you as we go through. I'm just going to start off by saying and asking the question, what is open innovation? So what is open innovation? Well, it's essentially where you have a, a permeable boundary in two directions around your organization. So what does that mean? It means that it's not just you putting ideas out into the world that you've developed internally, but you actually have got ideas coming into your organization from wherever that might be. It might be from customers, suppliers, you know, just random stakeholders, people out there who've got some really good ideas. So my definition of open innovation is that it's an approach taken by a business or organisation to access the ideas, technology and knowledge that's available externally. And it's going beyond employees and the current supply chain and out into the wider world and, and actually inviting that innovation into the business. Now, the term open innovation is 20 years old. This book by um, Henry Chesborough that I'm about to talk to you about, um, Open Innovation, the New Imperative for Creating and Profiting from Technology, came out in 2003. And you might be saying, why are we here talking about, thinking about a concept that, um, you know, an idea that's 20 years old? Well, it's because, yes, it's, it's 20 years old, if not older. Um, this book came out then, and Henry Chesborough is really, you know, the main person when it comes to coining this phrase, open innovation. But it's growing. It's becoming more and more important because the challenges that we need to deal with as organisations and the opportunities that are out there are becoming a lot more complex um, and difficult to solve. And there's, you know, and we're also, be, I think, maturing a lot more. So we are becoming more collaborative um, in nature and less old school. So open innovation, 20 years old and as relevant today in 2023, actually more so than it was when this first came out in 2003. And open innovation is all about um, business model. So there are some closed innovation principles, um, you know, some, some old fashioned traditional ways of thinking 
that um, have been and are being more and more replaced by these open innovation principles that I'm really, really pleased about that. So a closed innovation principle is that the smart people in the field work for us. So we've got all the smart people here in our organisation. But in open innovation, we um, know that there's a lot more knowledge, creativity and wisdom, expertise from lots of bright individuals outside the company or the organization. So we're open you know, and, and strong enough, mature enough to want to tap into that. The old way of doing things, the closed innovation principle is that to profit from R&D, we've, we've got to be the ones who discover it and find it out for ourselves, develop it and ship it. But with open innovation, we realize that external R&D, research and development can create significant value and we need some internal R&D to claim and, and shape that value, but actually we don't have to invent everything here. And the old way of thinking is if we discover it ourselves, we'll get it to the market first. Whereas a more contemporary sustainable way of thinking is we don't have to originate the research to profit from it. And actually building a better business model is better than getting to the market first. And Again, if we create the most and best ideas in the industry, we'll win. Whereas modern thinking is around if we make the best use of internal and external ideas, we'll win. And then the final differentiator between traditional uh, closed innovation principles and open ones is around intellectual property or IP. So the old way of thinking is we should control our intellectual property so that our competitors don't profit from our ideas. And the open innovation way is we should profit from others' use of our IP and we should buy others' IP whenever it advances our business model. So you can see I've, I've used the old and traditional there. And, um, you know, really, I should have said closed, but those closed innovation principles are becoming, fortunately, less and less as I'm seeing more and more open innovation principles. And as we go through, I'll give you some examples of all of this in practice, but it's important to set the scene. Okay, so let's just have a, a final look at the original model of open innovation. As I've said, um, it, was, uh, it was really Henry Chesborough who coined the phrase open innovation and, and wrote the book and came up with the concepts. And with closed innovation, the firms, the organisations boundaries are closed and all the ideas come from within and that it's not really admitting uh, ideas from outside. Um, whereas with um, open innovation, th those boundaries are really fuzzy and there are ideas passing inside and outside the organization all the way through to create this uh, more of an open innovation business model. So I hope all that ma is making sense. Let me know. Um, so it's great. Uh, welcome. I can see that, that there's... Uh, Lots of people watching, which is fantastic, you're watching live. If you're watching on replay, you can also leave questions and suggestions and your ideas in the comments as well. I'm uh, live streaming on YouTube, LinkedIn and Facebook at the moment. So, so do let me know what you're thinking. Um, and if there's anything you want me to expand on, I'll do that as well. Now, 20 years on, uh, we're here in 2023. That book was from 2003. And what this is showing, it's from openinnovation.eu, is that open innovation is continuing to grow. It's becoming more and more relevant, and there's evidence of this. So um, open innovation strategy uh, and spillover, where you've got uh, really started it all. So spillover is where you've got similar organizations or in a similar location, really just you know naturally, organically learning from each other. And with things like COVID-19, with the sustainability challenges we've got, um, open innovation is growing and growing and growing. It's expanding into all sorts of domains and fields as well. So open innovation and industry 5.0 with data, digital, um, technology, AI, all of that. And with um, HR, people, culture. Uh, with those sorts of um, topics as well. So uh, this open innovation phenomenon is, is growing and growing from strength to strength and becoming far more important. And that's because there are so many benefits for it. Um, it involves companies of all sizes and all stages. So if you are a pre-startup or a startup, 
you know, open innovation is for you. If you are the largest organization, one of the largest organizations in the world, open innovation is for you. If you are a government organization or a private organization aimed at making profit or a charity, you can um, get engaged in open innovation. And that's because you can run your own program and open your doors as a larger organization or as a smaller organization, you can find um, relevant open innovation opportunities. And I'll talk to you about that in a moment, about how you can access those to help you grow your business and solve your customers' problems um, alongside with them in a collaborative way. So it's for companies of all say, stages and sizes. Um, it's for universities and research organizations. So there's always that, that, you know, that brilliant dynamic of, of finding research problems um, you know, for the real world and then universities working their magic with great research and development to, to solve those problems and translate them into the real world and backwards and forwards and with spin outs and so much more. So it's great for them, as I've said, for government organisations, not for profits. And it's great for end users, consumers and society because when this open innovation dynamic happens, you know, people are working together to collaborate and share ideas and solve problems together. It means that the people who are at the receiving end are going to get such um, such better solutions as a result of it. So it's value all the way round. And this is great study by Cap Gemini, um, which is within the last year or so, which demonstrates what some of the benefits of open innovation are. And Cap Gemini surveyed around a thousand uh, leaders in different organisations and found that more than eight out of ten of those organisations see open innovation as being critical for addressing their sustainability challenges. You know, so sustainability is, is huge. You know, which, which fuels should we use? How should we use them? What about converting, retrofitting, uh, biodiversity, uh, net gain? All of these, uh, all of these uh, topics, um, you know, we're, we're, we're sort of grappling with together. And by working with others, we can get there faster. We can share expertise and knowledge. And lots of, of benefits for organisations from open innovation. Um, the same study uh, showing that around 64% of organisations engaged in open innovation have seen um, increased operational efficiency, 55% getting faster innovation, 62% um, increased employee agility and adaptability. Um, around half are finding that they're able to adopt technology use cases better and around 63% saying there is, they're seeing improved environmental sustainability um, indicators as a result of that. So um, open innovation, uh, around about 83% organisations are using them to achieve sustainability goals, 75% um, complex business issues and 71% are saying they are going to increase their investment in open innovation in the next two years. So look, if you're not involved in open innovation, now's the time to look around and see those opportunities and look for how you can get engaged in those opportunities. And I'm gonna give you a few examples. Maybe you are involved in open innovation already. And if so, I'd love to hear from you. And also uh, please do share your tips and experience in the comments. So here's an example, open innovation at NASA. NASA runs some amazing open innovation programs for all sorts of things, whether it was um, helping with the response to COVID-19, um, getting uh, they, using the crowd to problem solve, as they call it, um, in, in the pandemic, pandemic, returning to the moon, uh, reaching new frontiers in science, um, and they are using citizen scientists as part of their NASA team, and they've published about that as well. Some great resources if you're interested in this and getting some ideas on open innovation. So, you know, this open innovation, yes, it's about other businesses and other organisations. It goes through to citizens, to individuals as well. You can crowdsource your um, some of your innovation thinking. And one that I've been um, in, involved with as well, uh, to an extent, is Sellafield Game Changers. And this is an amazing open innovation program, um, which, uh, so Sellafield is a nuclear power station 
in the United Kingdom and it is going through a decommissioning process. And that decommissioning process throws up some new challenges um, that needs to be overcome with, with new solutions. And what the Sellafield Game Changers program does is it publishes uh, challenges and says, this is the challenge, these are the constraints, this is what we're trying to achieve here, this is the sort of environment that we're working in and things to bear in mind. And it publishes those challenges and openly invites anyone with, with any ideas or proposals on how those challenges might be solved differently to, to get in touch. And there's also the possibility of getting some funding as well to, to try that idea and put it into practice. Um, there are events, there is networking, um, they, they run all sorts of amazing things. For all of these things, the, I'm going to put all these links into the show notes for you for everything I'm referencing here so that you can go and find out more. And um, it, it really is a very, a very great programme to get involved with if um, if that's something of interest to you. And you know, sometimes it's not about responding to a challenge. Sometimes it's also about the networking and the learning and the other things that you get from open innovation, you know, the, the contacts, uh, the ideas that you can get as well. So um, check that one out. I've got some more coming up for you. And one that I am super um, involved with and love and I'm, I'm very proud of um, is the Port of Tyne uh, based uh, 2050 Maritime Innovation Hub and that's a partnership of a number of organisations coming together um, working on decarbonising the maritime sector, working on collaboration, sharing ideas, looking at using non-commercial non-sensitive data to develop uh, new solutions for all sorts of things in maritime um, even looking at, at skills, um, diversity and other topics as well. So 2050 Maritime Innovation Hub has all sorts of free events. And please don't be thinking that, oh, I'm not in the nuclear sector or my business isn't in maritime. You know, have a look, just investigate, go outside of your sector and see what other opportunities are there for you because there might be opportunities for you to translate what you're doing in some areas into a new sector that, that needs those solutions. So do look beyond uh, where you will normally operate because with a few tweaks here and there and a bit of transfer stuff, you might be able to get your products and services out into a brand new domain and open up a whole new world of opportunity. Um, so Maritime Innovation Hub, 2050 Maritime Innovation Hub at the Port of Tyne. Um, with partners, um, Department for Transport, Nissan, um, Drax, uh, Offshore Renewable Energy Catapult, Connected Places Catapult, um, Ubisoft, Accenture, uh, Fraser Nash, um, BT and, and, and others. So, so do have a look at that and see what's going on there. And um, this is one that I don't know personally, but looks really fa a fabulous um, open innovation program, which is AstraZeneca's CoSolve. And this is uh, about a uh, pharmaceutical um, industry. And they've got uh, challenges, sprints. There's um, a CoSolve program for sustainability. And essentially, they are opening their ideas at AstraZeneca with this CoSolve program to anyone with innovative ideas, technologies and entrepreneurial solutions um, to help uh, some of the issues that their R&D team are facing. And they want to transform healthcare and make a real difference to patients by um, doing this open innovation as well. So there's another example for you. And then for OVL, um, have got a, a brilliant um, open innovation model. They're big on infrastructure. And um, again, they're looking at co collaboration with external partners. You know, I could keep going and going and going with um, examples for you of all sorts of sectors for open innovation. So there's bound to be something in the domains that you're working in. Just go and have a look. And maybe you've been exposed to them, but you don't realise them or you're not thinking of them as open innovation. And perhaps understanding them as that um, will help you see more of the opportunity that you can get beyond the typical sort of networking and learning, actually, um, you know, going forward with some projects together. And final example for now is the Food Industry Executive 
um, are you know reporting that big companies are betting on open innovation to lead the transformation of the agri-food industry. And this is a report uh, from Eatable Adventures, uh, which is one of the uh, leading global food technology accelerators with corporate programs, um, you know, all sorts of things that they're, they're doing. They have a whole entrepreneurial ecosystem um, around this area. So these things might not be labelled as open innovation. It might be a, an innovation hub or an innovation centre. It could be an accelerator program. It could be um, issued as challenges, you know. So they might not use the term open innovation, but if you look for the principles of open innovation um, under the name, you'll see these uh, in operation. A catalyst is another one. Uh, so yeah, lots of different terms to look out for there. And crowdsourcing, I mentioned crowdsourcing earlier, and I like the example of IKEA. I often use IKEA actually in these sessions, don't I, in these shows. Um, IKEA do some really interesting things and take some really novel approaches. But they um, often will crowdsource and use what they call participative marketing to uh, design stores in certain locations. So an example I've got for you um, is from about 2019 actually, and they've done it since, is uh, an, an IKEA in Madeleine, which was designed by and for Parisians. And it, as a result of that, because it was co-designed in this open innovation approach, they had a record number of visitors, 29,000 people visited that store on its opening day. So they crowdsourced it. They had a co-creation platform online um, and they wanted people to design the new store as an extension of their apartment. So you can get creative with it as well. And if you're thinking, well, my industry is not doing a lot, start something in your industry. Yeah, you can you can start however big or small you are. Uh, and you can also turn towards customers and have some creative ways about engaging your customers with the things that you're doing and the things that you are innovating. So it's all very exciting. There are some challenges around open innovation. It's not all smooth sailing. Um, you need to build a thriving innovation ecosystem. And a thriving innovation ecosystem means having um, companies, organisations, people of all kinds in there, big ones, small ones, um, advisory ones, doing ones, you know, supply chain, all of those um, organisations um, in there and them collaborating and connecting really well in, in, in the right way. And often that's in, in an organic way, but it just needs to be cultivated and nurtured. And you need to really understand how open innovation can help your business and what is your innovation strategy? Where does this fit in? As well as being open to some new ideas that open innovation can take you in some, some new directions, you know, and have a bit of serendipity about some of the opportunities that might come up as well. And of course, collaboration skills and knowing how to collaborate and being able to collaborate really, really well um, helps with open innovation. And sometimes it's those collaboration skills where open innovation can fall down. So or feel like it's hard work. So, you know, do think about those. And I've got these free resources for you as well. So on the Big Bang Partnership .co.uk um, blog, you'll find uh, detailed articles on how to build a thriving innovation ecosystem, how innovation, uh, sorry, how open innovation can help your business and, and how you can engage in collaborative innovation. And I've also got videos on the Big Bang Partnership YouTube channel on collaborative innovation for your business and how to build an innovation strategy um, for your business. So you need all of that if you are going to um, actively engaged and productively engaged in open innovation activities yourself. So if you want to get started on open innovation, um, as I've said, firstly, be clear on your purpose and priorities. Why are you doing this? What do you want to achieve? And be open to serendipity. Um, so new opportunities, new ideas, things that you could never have thought of before you got involved in open innovation um, may come your way and it's really good to be on the lookout for those because sometimes they can take you on you know a really brilliant journey that you just wouldn't have expected um, look for events accelerators challenges clusters calls you know open innovation as i've said doesn't always badge itself as open innovation 
it often comes under the guise of another name um, so so do look out for those and uh, see how you can get involved and we've talked about um, so some events already um, the catapult uh, connector place catapult and others have live events um, here in the uk uh, lots of opportunities to connect there northumbrian water has an annual innovation festival and anyone can come thousands of people join that innovation festival every year online and in person uh, to talk about the challenges of water and wastewater going forward using innovation sprints um, maritime innovation week from the 2050 maritime innovation hub uh, is that's an event uh, in 2023 it's happening from the 7th to the 9th of november um, all free so look look out for that google that online and um, the innovation super network as well is another one that has some I, and i could honestly i could fill slides and slides with logos of all the different amazing open and events, open innovation events that are going on and the brilliant um, resources expertise that these things bring. So if you're not involved, look out for something near you, wherever you are um, in the world, whatever you're doing, whatever industry you're in, however big you are, and, and look for those opportunities. Um, cultivate and leverage your network before you need it, right? So even if you're not quite sure what you're going to get out of this or why you why you do it, ideally, you know, you would have an innovation strategy, but don't worry if you don't, um, because it's really important to build your network and opportunities arise and then the network is there um, ready for you to collaborate with. And think about co-opetition rather than competition. And co-opetition is really a way of saying that you you know from time to time where it's right and where it's appropriate and legal and all of those things it's it's good to collaborate with your competitors on things that um you know aren't commercially sensitive or aren't difficult uh, to to collaborate on things that uh, will benefit the greater good like safety the environment um, you know, some of the people stuff, diversity, um, raising the image of a whole industry, all of those things you can collaborate with your competition on. Um, make sure you're clear on your own value proposition, what your organisation's about, and you can communicate that. Um, and if you are a small business and if you're a larger business and you've got challenges and you want people to come to you to help you solve those challenges, through open innovation, make sure you're really clear in terms of what your challenges are and express them in a way that people can get their heads around them and come up with some um, new, different, useful, purposeful solutions. And finally, my tip is to approach all of this with a growth mindset. Yes, you'll do some stuff and not, uh, not all roads will lead to uh, you know, a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Um, but there is always some learning, always some benefit to be had. And some really fantastic magical things come out of open innovation, right? But you've got to be in it um, to, to, to be in with a chance of, of experiencing and getting some of those. And it really is all very valuable. By adopting a growth mindset and seeing it all as learning, progress, connection and building steps for a greater future, you're going to get a lot out of it. So I do hope this is interesting and useful for you. I hope it's um, just stopped you in a, for a moment and, and helped you think about if you're a large organization you know is this something you should be doing um for you know opening up challenges and connecting with smaller businesses and universities and different organizations and so on um, maybe you're doing it already and you're thinking about how could you do it better how could you take it to the next level small businesses how can you join in universities researchers how can you connect better um, with all of those businesses um, so and, and, and sort of non-businesses public sector organizations too so I do have a think about it um, I'm always here if you've got any questions or you'd like any help with it you know where I am just leave me uh, a note in the comments or get in contact direct and of course there's lots of more free innovation resources for you um, at bigbangpartnership.co.uk forward slash resources and I'll put all the links to everything I've talked about in the show in the comments. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Thank you for tuning in to the Idea Time Show brought to you by Dr. Joe North. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and access more completely free resources at bigbangpartnership.co.uk forward slash resources. We'll see you next time.